Hello, my name is Jordan, and today we're looking at NIMBY Rails. Um, I did warn everybody that uh, subscribing to this channel might be a little dangerous. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, it's been uh, several months since I've made a video. Um, no particular reason, just haven't been making videos. Um, but, I mean, I warned you, so. Um, I still like the game, obviously. I uh, just haven't played it recently. Um, however, there is a new update, as you can see down at the bottom here. 1.2.25 is the version that I'm running. Um, that has added many, many things. Um, some very interesting things, um, and fortunately includes a save game converter, so we can continue with the game that we were playing um, and take advantage of all the new features. So we'll go ahead and press continue game. Take us in. So let's pause real quick, and I'll just go over some of the things that have changed. Um, so uh, first, and probably most significantly, um, the way that tracks are laid has been changed. Um, so as you can see now, there's kind of controls over how deep and how high um, above and below the ground a track is laid. Um, you can see anything that is viaduct is above, uh, ground and tram are on the ground, um, and then tunnel is underneath. Um, and there's also speed differences now, so you can make tracks which are ground, um, but are slower, uh, for cheaper. So we can see if we go over here and we lay a little bit of ground track, um, about 850 meters or so, that is the low speed, or the medium speed, but if we do about the same high speed, you can see that uh, it is a little bit more expensive. Um, and you can actually see that if you break it out here, the price per kilometer for the high speed and the medium speed. So yeah, it's uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, another interesting thing that was added in 1.2 is this double track. Um, so if we zoom in, we can see that these were single tracks. Um, they only go one direction. Um, or rather, they can only carry one train at a time. Um, so they could go both directions. Um, but you run the risk of collisions if you run trains in both directions unless you use signaling, which is also something that you can do. So to make this a one-way track, we would do this and just add some signals that tell it, hey, it's one way. You can only use it in one direction. Um, without this, um, you can run trains in both directions uh, on single track, um, just like you can in real life. Uh, but doing so comes with uh, risks. Uh, you want to use blocks, uh, signal blocks, and things like that in order to um, ensure that you're not going to end up having some collisions uh, between trains. Um, I've never actually set it up so that trains collide. I don't know exactly what happens, but I have to assume that something happens. Um, so yeah, uh, another really interesting thing um, is that this, uh, so we'll hit this button here and now it'll automatically double track. Um, you can now branch from anywhere. It's entirely up to you how you want to branch. Um, I was doing something interesting where it's crossing over. That's fascinating. Uh, okay, so if I hold Alt, then the parallel track tool goes away. That's interesting. 
Um, so anyways, uh, you can branch from anywhere. You have a lot better control over branching now, um, which is fantastic. Um, and you can off of this. So I have it set up to, to double track, right? But if I do this, if I do single track, I can branch from just one of the sides. I could do this. Um, and this lets me uh, do things like branch different directions in different ways, something like that. So yeah, um, lots of excellent features here. Um, and we might even use some of them. Um, certainly, we're going to use some of the signaling. So if you see here, everything, uh, like I said, it includes a save game converted, converter. Um, so it added these scissor interchanges um, to the stations um, and the appropriate signaling. Uh, so this is path signaling. Um, and then it added these station stop and start markers. So this is, determines where the train will uh, pause to, to load and unload passengers. Um, but we might actually use signaling for something like this. You can see up here, um, I was just going through and kind of getting a feel for how it works. Uh, but you can see I have signaling set up here. Um, so this is just an example of how you might do signaling. Um, here we have simple block. Um, so now what will happen uh, if I, is there one nearby? Go in the other direction. Okay, so we'll, we'll speed this up and wait till this train comes down, and then I can actually show you. Okay, so when this train enters the block, that is formed by the signals here, um, it will turn red um, so that anybody uh, or any train that is waiting to enter this intersection uh, will be forced to stop. Um, now, well, let's speed it up a little bit here so you can actually see it happen. There. So the entire intersection just went red. Um, and you can see the tracks which are actually blocked um, at the moment are marked red. Uh, so it isn't handling this one very well. Uh, this track is also physically blocked, um, the one from here to here. Um, but it uh, isn't marked red. So, But the intersection itself is, so even so, there aren't any trains that would be able to enter. Yeah. Anyway, so there's there's new features. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, if we look at things like um, our lines, this is now all of the timing is now done automatically. So all of the um, I mean, we can do it manually, but I don't see why we would. Um, now it uses the, so you use a train that's on the line as a reference for as far as like speed and the characteristics of the train. Um, and then you, it, you know, it automatically spaces them out. So it looks at the number of trains that you have um, and it just spaces them correctly, which is great. Um, and you have this button down here, purchase new trains for this line, which is also amazing. Uh, and you get things like this, which shows you which trains it can, or which lines it can transfer to at different stations. So if we look here, we can see all the transfer points on our subway. Um, the city center line obviously has the most transfers, but there's other transfer points, um, which let us uh, kind of get a feel for how our network looks and what sorts of things um, our passengers might be looking at. Um, in addition to that, we have this view, which is also amazing. Um, this allows us to look at stations, as this is every station, um, all of our trains individually or our lines. And 
it kind of gives us like a data view of uh, the different qualities, uh, the different metrics that we might look at. Um, and importantly, it gives us this real-time view, which is incredible. So uh, for instance, what we can do is we can look at stations and then we can look at capacity used. And this tells us if there's any stations um, that are experiencing problems. So you can see the station has a maximum of 200. Uh, I covered that in my first video. Um, this is still true. Uh, and it has the station listed as 79% capacity. And when we clicked on it, we saw it was 158 out of 200 max. Um, so it's generating passengers, um, but we might be running into the, the maximum size of the station. So the station might need to be expanded. Um, so if we unpause it uh, and look at it, we can see it tick up, tick up, tick up, but we can also see that the trains are coming. Um, and so it's probably not gonna reach 100. And sure enough, as soon as it gets loaded up, now this Hill Valley or, or Happy Valley uh, station is no longer at a concerning capacity, uh, which is fantastic. So there's lots of these little kinds of features. Um, I'm sure that we will use these more and more um, as we continue playing. So looking at, um, at this, I think the metrics for how passenger trips were calculated um, and kind of what sort of trips they wanted to make uh, was updated a little bit. I haven't looked at the, the change logs in depth, but it appears that way. Um, since if we look at the, if we look at the profit um, for these lines, the express line, which if you'll recall, was easily clearing 10 million in profit a day, um, is now pretty consistently below our West Coast local lane. Um, and that's okay, we're still making plenty of money, um, but the way that these trips are calculated um, and the destinations are calculated have been changed. Um, and so we probably want to adapt our lines a little bit. Now, we invested in this giant line here. Um, as you can see, I've run the simulation a little bit to kind of build up some funds for us to play around with. Um, but uh, I think our first priority is going to be to build a subway system up here in Seattle, um, a, at least a, a basic one, so that we can generate more trips and more destinations up here in Seattle. So we're going to apply a lot of the same things that we did in Portland and that we've done on other um, projects that we've done in this. So the first thing, um, obviously, we're going to, this is going to be underground. Uh, so we want our high-speed tunnel with our station platforms. We want it to be double-tracked. Um, and we'll go ahead and tell it, yeah, go make auto-append the scissors. So these are the uh, things that allow it to reverse direction. Um, and now let's just take a look here. So we definitely want to hit the university district. Um, we want to go over this way as well. Bellevue and Redmond are both very um, important places to provide transit options to. So we're probably going to want to do something that comes down like this and then goes across Bellevue, Overlake, and Redmond, and maybe all the way up to uh, Union Hill. Um, Maybe not all the way out to Duval, that's a little far. Um, but going up, uh, so after the University of Washington, um, most, uh, or the, the larger population concentrations are over here along Aurora. Um, if we zoom in, oh, that's right, it doesn't have a street name. So this is Aurora Avenue. Um, it is one of the main north-south corridors. It's actually, uh, I think this is US 99. Um, so I believe it's National Highway, actually, also. Um, and this is I-5 right here. So most of the uh, population concentrations north of 
the university district are to the west of I-5, but the university district is to the east of I-5. So if we came up here, um, you know, and hit Capitol Hill, Montlake, University District, hit this area, um, then we'd have to do this weird curve over here and come back up. Um, and besides, we probably also want something going up this way, maybe across Fremont, um, maybe over here into Ballard. Uh, I'm not sure. But um, I'm thinking we're probably going to want two north-south lines. One that goes up Aurora and maybe makes its way all the way up to Everett. Um, and then one that goes up university into the University of Washington and then goes over to Lake City, Lake Forest Park, and then over to Bothell. So it makes kind of a curve around uh, Lake Washington here. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about going south, um, like towards Renton. Um, maybe that'll be a future expansion, but I think for now, just hitting some of these more north areas and maybe hitting over towards Bellevue um, is a good idea. So we know that we have some north-south lines that we want to do, so let's set up the station. Okay, so we want one on the left. Let's see, hit that, and we want one on the right. Move this a little bit. <clears throat> As I've mentioned several times, uh, just because it doesn't impact the game mechanics doesn't mean that we can't um, make things look nice. So let's get those lines. All right, and so those two stations by themselves, 133 million. So we know this is going to be kind of an expensive venture, but hopefully it'll be worth it. So we're going to go over here. And uh, I don't think we need scissor intersections because these will be straight through. <laughs> so we want one up here. We don't need it that big. Um, all right, and we'll go to the we'll we'll keep the platform length at two hundred, so you can see the larger one there, two hundred. Um, yeah, so three hundred eight, that looks good. Oh, well, that's close enough. South Lake Union. All right, and we want one. Maybe Capitol Hill. Maybe we move this a little bit further to the west. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Let's, let's do this. That's good. We'll select these, delete it, and we'll move it over this way. So we want something that's more like this. Um, and we're very likely going to run into the station size problems with this one. <laughs> so I'm thinking about how we might mitigate that. Uh, okay, so let's, let's just make some dummy stations. Um, this is what we'll do for now. Uh, maybe there are better ways to handle this. But um, for now, what we'll do is we'll just add some platforms um, so that it the station size um, can actually handle the amount of passengers that it's likely to generate. 
So let's go over here and we'll do the same thing. Now these platforms aren't gonna be used, um, at least at first. We could maybe use them in the future as uh, alternatives. Maybe if we're running so many, so many trains um, on a single line. Or this could allow us to run multiple uh, multiple lines using the same station without uh, running parallel platforms like this. We use something that actually joins the line. Um, so this kind of gives us some options. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go back over here. We're going to double track it again. Uh, no, we don't want the scissor station. Um, all right. So want this. Okay. Ten thousand. Well, it's gonna it's a very busy station. Um yeah, we might actually want one going east west across here too. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. So for now, let's just go over here. So this one will go up here. Let's see. Get it in the middle there. Hmm. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll run this up Aurora, and then I think we'll run a tram system eventually. I don't think we'll do that this episode, but we'll run a tram system um, that allows us to get some of those additional uh, additional pockets. So one there. One there. And Greenwood. Okay. And this one up here, Ravenna. Okay. All right. And that's good for these north south lines. Now we want a east west coming out. So let's go over here. Oh, this needs a uh, look. Let's turn that back on. All right. All right, so we're running into maximum length issues, but that's fine. We don't need it to be that long. All right, and we'll angle this down a little bit because for these east-west lines, because of the shape of Seattle, um, it's very likely that most of the lines coming out of here, we're going to want to angle downward anyways. We can see kind of Beacon Hill and over towards this direction. Other lines coming this direction, we want to angle. So, All right, so turn that off. And then we want probably this. Uh, Okay, and we'll do one in Beaumont, maybe angled a bit. This, this, and Like that. Cool. All right, and these will be our basic Seattle lines. So we're going to connect them up now. We want to make sure this double track mode is turned on. Um, this is the equivalent of the way that it used to do tracks. So, all right.
So 179, yeah, that's fine. Now we're probably going to have to expand these other stations as well. Um, this one in particular. Okay. All right, so that hits that one. And now we want this. There we go. 153, 133, yeah, that'll be fine. All right, and now we just go straight up. Mm, some of these hotkeys. Not used to them anymore. All right. And that's our line. So, um, we know, hmm, there's lots of opportunity here for, uh, tramps. So I think in the interest of, um, In the interest of getting this station to the correct size, we're just going to go ahead and build a couple of these tram stations. Uh, at least 150. Yeah. And this will help the station get to the right size. Um, and then I'll build one that's north-south. There we go. And I don't know if we'll use those, but they're so inexpensive. Um, that I'm not too concerned. All right. Um, now I'll go ahead and take care of the east west. Oh, uh, we want this to <laughs> not a tram line. Um, right. There we go. Excellent. And just connect these up. Excellent. So this is going to greatly extend um, our trip generation for our West Coast Express. Let's go ahead and build all blueprints. Build. All right, now we'll pause and we will create the lines. So first thing, this is Seattle subway and all right first we'll do the Redmond line so this is uh, excuse me subway one and it was two and two five I believe um, yeah, two and two five. Okay. Service closed. Um, 
and we will add some new trains. All right, now we were using the Type B Metro, this one. So Oh, wow. Yeah. So let's do six trains. Um, Metro. What do we got next? 250. Okay. So we want. Uh, Where's the length? Where'd it go? No, the entire, there we go, 95 meters. Okay. Okay, so that's just the max that we can do. Yes, that's probably what we want. We want six of these. And purchase. Just make sure. Yeah, that looks correct. Purchase. Oh, it's so nice. It even auto groups them now. Man. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at our line. Um, right now it's closed. Um. Let's run it with empty trains uh, so that we can kind of see it going. Uh, first, we need to actually do the stations, though. OK, add stop. So here. Yes, that was correct. All right, and come back the other way. And we're good. All right, so uh, you see, just it just does it. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. All right, so that should just go. Um, maybe we can just run it right now. All right, so let's do the next line. Um, I think we'll make this green. All right, and two and two five. All right, Seattle subway. Um, University of Washington. Seattle subway two. All right, um, and I guess we'll do we'll do these first. We'll do this part first so that it knows how to how to handle all of this stuff. Well, how to calculate the timings and so on. Okay, and then that's it. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's add those trains. It's 152. It's already pre-configured. That is also excellent. Um, I think we can probably do, this is a shorter line. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's a much shorter line about half the distance, but it's also a more heavily used line. So we might want five minute timings. Um, okay, so we'll do four and we'll see what that looks like. Let's look at the line. Yeah, about five minute timings. Cannot find path.
Ravenna C. Okay, Ravenna C to where? Ah. So this is an end station, it's a terminus, right? So I did not make this the 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 scissor interchange, right? Uh, that button. I did not mark this as having a scissor interchange. Um, and so it can't turn around. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to manually do this. Uh, we're gonna want to. We're not gonna want to double track this. Um. That makes sense. That is easy enough to do. All right. So let's add signals. Uh, so we want a path signal right here. And we want a block signal right here. Um, and we want a F and a uh, F. All right. So let's change it. Okay, so it needs to be beyond these lines. Okay. This can go excellent. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not that hard to do, so we'll just signal the other one as well. Um, F, 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 and block. Cool. Oh. 
make sure these are beyond. Excellent. All right, so now it should work. Yes, so we don't have that warning anymore. Let's look. Yes. So we need to do the same thing over here. And we'll just go ahead and do it because it's not that uh, it's not that difficult. All right. Um, and we'll just do we'll just do this end uh, in the interest of time. I'm sure I'll come back and I'll fix all of this. But uh, all right, build the blueprint. Add. All right. So we need path block. And then up here, we need path and we need path. And then make sure that those work. That works. That works. I might want to overlay like that. And then, yeah, get it out to the side. Cool. All right, so now what do we have? It works. Excellent. All right, and then we're going to need to do the same thing up here. And then add our signals. And as long as we are beyond these lines, which mark where the intersection starts, um, the signal should work. Perfect. All right, now let's finish off this last line, get it going, and then we can end the episode there. So this one, run it at full. Uh, five minute, yeah, five minute, 26 second timing, that's fine. All right, so last line, um, and this one will be bluish. Go. Okay, Seattle, Subway, uh, Aurora, all right, three, and two, and two, five. All right, we'll just change it to full immediately and then get us some of these trains. So we're gonna want more than four, probably five. Well, actually four might work. Let's start it with four. 
We can add more later. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, oh, we didn't do <laughs> the actual stops. All right, here and there. And there we go. That should do it. So six, six and a half minute timings. That should be fine. All right. So now if we unpause, we have our subway. And if we look at our lines here, um, let's filter it for Uh, well, I, I guess we can keep it on profit. What we can do is we can look at these lines and um, contains total packs. So this is the current number of passengers riding on it. Um, so if we see the Redmond one, wow. The Redmond line has a lot of passengers on it. So these are all actually pretty well used, um, even already. But if we look here, let's get rid of these, and let's look at some of the stations. So 62 waiting. That's not bad. 35 waiting. 61 waiting. That one just had train come through. Ooh. We have 400 waiting over here. And there are a lot of passengers here that are waiting to go to somewhere down in Portland. That's excellent. So it's working correctly. Um, we are promoting trips um, to our more expensive line. And we should see more, more utilization on the express line coming up here. So let's run it at a bit of a higher speed. Kind of see what that looks like. Yeah. See that? That was a much fuller train. That that is much better than what we were doing before. So the strategy that I was using before of creating these feeder lines. Um, to promote transfers is even more important because the simulation has become better about simulating that kind of behavior, um, which you can actually see if uh, is it? Uh, there's an option here under options. I can't remember. Um, there is an option here. Oh, yeah, right. Pax AAI at stations. Considers any train or only considers optimal train. So considers any train um, allows them to take various different paths um, depending on a variety of things. Um, but the the ways in which the simulation is accurate have expanded since the last time that I made a video. Um, and it's very interesting now that some of the things that I did, um, just because it was what I wanted to do, um, and it felt more realistic, um, actually benefit me now. Um, now that the simulation has been updated, the game has been updated uh, to include more things. Um, having this station as a central transfer point and really designing a network around transfers um, is something that has made this much better. Yeah, see? Look at that. People need places they can actually go to. Otherwise, why would you go? <laughs> All right. 
So excellent. Um, I think that is it for this episode. Um, I don't know. It's probably not going to be months before I make another one. I kind of feel like, uh, kind of feel like playing, playing more of it. So I'll probably stop the recording and continue, continue playing and just make the next episode. But who knows? Um, as I said in episode one, um, if you feel like subscribing, that's great, but please don't do that with any kind of expectation. This isn't, this isn't the place to, <laughs> to be spending your subscriptions and your notification, notification space. Um, I mean, unless you're, unless you're fine with that. Some people are, I know I am, I have subscriptions to channels and have kept them that uh, haven't posted content in years, um, but I want to know if they ever do. So I don't know if that's you, then I guess go ahead. But um, this wasn't, this gap was not me like messing up or failing to, to make videos or anything like that. This is just what to expect. Maybe I'll make tons of videos and get into a groove. Um, but maybe I'll get busy or not have time to play games and just there won't be any videos for months. So there's no way to know. Um, but I'm always happy to return to games like this. I don't know. There's just something really calm and relaxing about managing the intricacies of something like this. Anyways, I hope you enjoy. Uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.